Hello and welcome to the second chapter on our series of instructional videos for Kinemoto. In Kinemoto we have a variety of ways to check feedback on the way the player is moving and today we're going to look at how we can add these to our scene. So first off we're going to add one of them to our main camera. This one is going to be the body viewer. So go to your main camera and press add components and look for the body viewer. When you've added the body viewer, make sure you select the required bone material, which is included in the package. Then aside from that, you have the skill factor, which defines its size, and you have the view offset, which you can use to determine its position. For now, we're going to leave those to their default values. And we're going to uh, start our project. You can see the skeleton here, but it looks a little dark, so we need to make sure to add a directional light after this. Um, I'm going to turn off Maximize and Play so we can take a look at the scene, and I'm going to add a directional light. So now we're going to run it again. And aside from the game view you can see at the bottom, we can also see the scene here. It's currently on 2D, but if I uncheck 2D, you can see that the whole body is actually a 3D game object moving around. When the Kinect can't recognize uh, one of the joints uh, correctly, there will be a, a red line instead of a green line. Okay, so let's continue. Next up, the body index viewer. So go to your main camera, add the body index viewer. Body index viewer has two options. Mirror texture, which makes it work a bit like a mirror, and its screen location. When you add the body index viewer to your main camera, make sure to set up a screen location. I'm going to set it to the top left. And aside from that, go to the Kinemoto and make sure that the body index frame source is checked. So now we can run our project. And we have a little view of our body in the corner. So aside from the body index viewer, we have one more thing we can add, which is the color viewer. The color viewer basically works the same way as the body index viewer. So the only thing we have to change is its screen location, which I'm going to add to the top right. And I'm going to run the project. The reason why I'm not running it maximized is because I want to alter the location of our body viewer a bit. So I'm going to drag it a bit to the left and a bit downward. And I'm going to remember these coordinates so I can alter it without playing. So maximized, the skeleton is a bit uh, to the left and a bit in the corner now. And we have our color viewer and our body viewer. But aside from this, we can also add the body index viewer and the color viewer to any object that has a renderer attached. So I'm going to make a cube and a cylinder and I'm going to place these in my scene so I can add the body viewer and the color viewer to these objects. I'm 
just going to enlarge them a little bit and move them around so they're just a little bit more visible in our scene when we're going to test it. And the body viewer on our main camera was a little bit too low, so I'm going to alter that as well. Now go to your cube and add either the color viewer or the body index viewer. You don't have to bother with the screen location when you're adding it to an object. Now go to your cylinder and make sure you add the other component, which is the body index here in my case. And now we can run the game and we can see them in all different locations. So this looks pretty good. When you're adding the script to a cylinder, sometimes the renderer gets turned upside down. It will always work correctly on a regular shape, like a cube or a plane. But in case this happens, you just go to your object and just uh, turn it around a bit and it should look just fine. Okay, thank you for watching, we hope you enjoyed this tutorial video and stay tuned for the next one.